Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, my friend just uh, dropped off my um, movies. Uh, some of them are... He made some copies and some of them he let me have some movies that he doesn't actually see anymore. Some good movies like um, Christopher Lee movies and uh, vampire movies from the 60s. So... Anyway, so let's get started. We're going to actually finish this face we were doing before with Marlon Brando. And hopefully the other video is already downloaded on YouTube. Um, possibly today I might do a Facebook Live on my group. So let's see how that goes. And since I'm off today, I'm off tomorrow. So let's finish this face. And like I said, I don't promise anybody that I'm going to do, you know, exactly the same face because I need a lot of practice. I'm so used to drawing faces from my head. Of course, they come out pretty good. The only problem is that I need to practice uh, doing uh, like reference, you know, reference drawing and stuff, which that's important because that's how you learn by doing reference. So... Now, I'm going to add more details where I uh, left over because I was building the face on the other video. So now I'm going to, you know, finish off a little bit of the details here. Now, the chin, I made it too long, so I have to bring the chin just a little bit higher. And Marlon Brando has got uh, very, very strong features, especially on the jaw. So I want to make sure I capture, you know, pretty much his face. So let's see how that's actually, uh, actually work out. Let's see what happens. So, so far I got the uh, eyebrows a little bit good I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna do those eyes and the only problem with these eyes are that there's sort of there's a lot of um cast shadow right here underneath underneath the eye and on top of the where the eyelid is so I want to see if I can capture that hopefully I can let me see and uh this may like I said it may not look like him but it's always good to Go for the challenge. Yeah, my friend, uh, he uh, made me a copy of a couple of movies I asked him. And um, he let me have some good movies from the early vampire movies. Because he knows I like a lot of British movies. So he's really cool. So I got pretty much... Even though I used to have a DVD recorder. Um, I used to record stuff from the TV. But the way he does it, it's way better. The, um, the quality of the movie is fantastic. And... Uh, He did like probably um, some Spanish movies that are very, very hard to find. So he made that one for me. And, uh, and the early classic Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. Christopher Lee, uh, he did some scenes on Star Wars. Same thing with uh, Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing did Star Wars also on the first Star Wars movie that came out, which is Peter Cushing. Great actor. These, I mean, these are great, great actors from way, way back. And uh, I think Peter Cushing died already. And I think Christopher Lee died already. I'm not really sure. Could be still alive, I'm not really sure, but I gotta check. But these are the masters. I mean, these were great, great actors. 
uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing was more like horror movies, you know. Uh, another great actor was um, uh, Vincent Price. The other day, and I actually have it on my uh, library. If you guys are interested, check my library because not only I have uh, art tutorials, but I also have um, music and uh, movies. Some of them are full. You know, you can actually see it complete. And some of them are just trailers, but you can actually, you know, look at the trailer and see if you like it. And you might find one movie that you might like on Netflix. I, I know Netflix has a lot of good classic movies because I'm into more like classic movies. Um, I'm not into today's movies, uh, more like classic. I'm sort of like old school. So my friend, he's a very good friend. He does a lot of classic movies for me. Plus, there's a great, if you guys are interested, there's a great store in Miami. Here in Miami, it's called the, Mus the Music Museum. It's called the Music Museum, something like that. And uh, they got a lot of great movies. Um, original movies. Some of them are copied. Uh, some of them are, you know, in great condition, great quality. Um, so you can find this. It's called the, in Spanish, it's called Museo de Disco. So, um, in English, it's actually the Music Museum. So look it up. It's on 8th Street. I think on 60, 60th Avenue on 8th Street. Not only they got movies, but they also got good music. Um, it's very big. You got to check it out. If you ever, guys... If you guys ever drop by in Miami, it's it's like where Kai Ocho is. So they, they got a whole bunch of great movies and good music. Most of, most of the stuff that I've gotten is from there. So the only thing, they don't have any art books. <laughs> That's the only thing. Mostly all the art shops, uh, the art books that I go to, it's like Barnes & Noble's. Even though Barnes & Noble's, they have like different books and stuff, but they have a big selection of great art books that you can actually uh, look for. Um, but anyway, check it out. You go actually, yeah, you could Google it. I think you could Google pretty much what you're looking for, any type of store. So it looks a little bit like him. I just got to add a little bit more um, cast shadow in his eyes, you know. So this part of the nose is a little bit darker. And he's got very strong cheekbones. And I think I did this drawing before, way, way back. But since it's more easier to draw uh, the front view... So I think it's coming out better than the one I did before. Not really sure. I got to go back and look at the old drawing. So there you go. Marlon Brando. It's not perfect, perfect, but like I said, I don't promise anybody that I'm going to do a perfect, uh, a perfect drawing of uh, Marlon Brando. So it's just... It's a little bit of a hint of, of a Martin Brando. So, I'm going to shade over here a little bit. You can tell on his face there's a lot of highlights, especially in the front view. But I got to admit, the picture, the photo, the, actually the photographer that took this fantastic work, because you can see very dramatic his face, you know, very dramatic. And his eyes kind of like droops out a little bit. There you go. I think that's good. All right. So enough with the reference drawing. What we're going to do is we're going to do some more studying how to draw faces and three-quarter views and profiles. So let's start out with the profile. And let me see. Uh, let's get some books here.
We're going to study a little bit of everything here. Now, I don't know if I showed you this guy, this, um, this guy, his name is uh, Andy Fish. He made two books. It's pretty old. It's, I had this book for a very long time. Again, I got it for a bargain price. With the uh, membership card, I got it for like seven bucks. It's like 50% off. So it's a little bit damaged, you know, but it's got a lot of great uh, methods and techniques. So we're gonna go over this book and check it out, see. And we'll do some drawings and we're gonna work with this technique and this is more like for like cartooning you know I'm so like used to using the uh, Loomis method but I like to you know do a little bit of everybody's method so let's start out with a basic circle and let's read pretty much what it says here draw a vertical line down the center of the head you want to make sure you keep the features balanced Okay. And then we'll do the uh the jaw part. So it's sort of like an egg shape. That's what it is. An egg shape. And then the vertical the horizontal line is right near. So just picture that the eye line is going to be here. So I'm going to do it just a little bit different. I think um, the way he did it was just a little bit off. So the nose would be around here. And the chin would be around here. So let me sharpen this a little bit more. Just want to make sure it's nice and sharpened. Okay. Now, it says here halfway from halfway from the nose. Okay, here's the other. We start doing the segments for the eyes, the nose, the mouth. So we already, okay. Right there. And then now we could add the nose, a hint of the nose, the center of the nose. So we're sort of like doing shortcuts in order to get that mouth right. So remember that the mouth is right between the nose and the chin. So mouth should be around there so now what we're going to do is very carefully we're going to render in the ears like you see here and then we'll render the face but i'm going to actually change it a little bit because the proportions are not correctly done on this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to slice a little bit just a little Straight down, right down. Deers. And then the head. Right there. So I can erase this, these lines that I don't need. So we have a face. So what do we do next? We'll start working with the uh, features, the hair, the hairline should be here. So I want to start off the hair first. The 
this one is a little bit downward because I'm going to change the symmetry a little bit so just to make it a little bit interesting Let's use my black pencil so that way I can do the details now. Got the ears. So this is more like comic book, you know, comic book style um, drawing faces, you know, like the old classic old school comic book style. That's what this guy does. So he's sort of like a cartoonist and the fish. So if I want, I could just add more details because over here it doesn't really show you that much details. But, you know, it's up to you guys. You know, once you follow up with the method, you could do, go to the extreme, make it look really, you know, like it's really real, the face, you know. You got add more shade. And then you could do um, the planes also. You know, do the the planes for the the cheekbones here, and then the mouth. And we'll start working with the rest of the face right there. So it's very, very classic Marvel or DC. Yeah. That has some more details on the hair. Now over here it doesn't really show you the neck, so you just make your own neck. Remember that when the woman's, uh, when you're drawing a woman, the, the neck is this length from the corner of the eye. So the man is just about like this. A man has a more thicker neck. I'm not going to draw the iris of the eye because I've done that so many times already. I just want to show you guys how you do the rest. And sharpen this also. And I got to, um, because these sharpeners doesn't have a, you know, like a cover. So I got to be careful when I um, sharpen. So I got to find something, maybe an ashtray or something. Let me see what I could find. Hold Here we go. Used to be a CD cover that I used to have way, way back. It's amazing I still have it around. But I actually use this for other stuff, so. a mess here. Alright. Now we could uh see the highlight, the reflection of the light is coming this side, so we want to make sure we dark this side and this side of the nose and underneath. Nose right there. And then some part of the detail of the hair. So this is more like, you know, classic comic book style. Okay. Now let's do the block shape. 
the same style, the same technique. We're going to actually do the block shape, the uh, rectangle shape. So do normal rectangle shape. I would be here, the hairline, those, oh, chin. Okay, so we're gonna do the rectangle shape. So we're gonna do an oval, just like we did. Okay, that would be the oval. That oval, little by little, you're gonna start seeing the shape of the face we start doing the contour and the hair there and even if even if you actually do the u shape for our, our, like underneath the face you always remember it's got to be tapered in a little bit taper it in just a little bit Looks like somebody's making some noise in front of the door for a second. Hold on a second. I'm going to double check something here. Yeah, the neighbors on the other side everything you actually hear is so close by and i'm just like a door away and like i said man it's better to live like 20 i would say 20 feet away from everybody unfortunately we all live too close all right so now we have now we can indicate you know the eyes right there so we're doing it pretty much like like this, but we're using the uh, rectangle. And then eyebrows. The center of the nose. We're gonna do sort of like a, a V shape going down, but that V shape, you start doing the ball, nostrils, and then the corners of the nose. Okay, so now, we'll do the hair, do the, sorry, the uh, ears better, and the mouth. So I'm doing it exactly like this. The only problem is that I'm going to add more details because I like to add more details, make it look more realistic, so... More details and um, more cheekbones. I'm going to do that. Actually, let me do it better with the uh, pencil because I'm going to erase that later. The planes that comes out from the edges of the nose and then right here bottom of the lip and then right here I'm going to visualize a circle which is going to be the chin so just picture it as a circle you don't really have to draw it just visualize it trust me visual effect actually works a lot bit of a Loomis style but more like a comic book so it looks a little bit there you go, there you go. And 
And this triangle form that I did here, which is the uh, outer line of the corner of the nose, actually helps me indicate the length of the mouth. Again, you could also start from the top of the eye, from the corner of the eye. That would be the length of the mouth if you want. But this is a man's mouth, so you have to be very careful when you're doing the man's mouth. Okay, so we did pretty much with the box shape. Now let's do this. Um, actually, wait a minute. It's another page. We're going to do the three quarter view, but it's around here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Here are the segments, step by step process. And after that, you add the features. So let's try this out. We'll do it here. We'll do it with a pencil first. Vertical line for the center of the face. And then we'll do the jaw. Uh, it tells you right here. Draw a circle as you did in, in how to draw the head's lesson on CPH 25, okay? Second, draw the jaw line. Okay, I did it a little bit different. I did the vertical line first, but it doesn't matter. Uh, draw the center of the line as if you were drawing a line down and an egg and then turning it slightly. At the halfway point, draw the vertical, okay. So we're gonna do it this way. So this will be the eye line right here. So over here it tells you halfway from the eye line. So draw a small line to the right about. Okay, they're telling you pretty much, which I already have an idea, but I'm I'm doing it by the book, so. Okay, now the mentions are done. Draw the bumps for the ears and make four evenly spaced out the eyes and mine. So they're telling you to start with the ears, but I usually like to start with the eyes. So let's try with the ears. Let's try with the ears. And then the space for the eyes. Remember, this is a three-quarter view, so you're going to bring this a little bit closer. Okay, and this one a little further out. Okay. Then it says, draw the lines for the eyes, nose, and work. Yeah, pretty much. So now we can start working with a better pencil here. Do the eyebrows. The eyes. Nose and the mouth, mouth, lips, right here would be the jaw. So what I'm doing is I'm working with the features first and then I'm going to start doing the contour of the face. The dog is probably saying, you left me out in the rain. Poor doggy. So, this is what we're doing here, okay? This kind of reminds me of um, Brian Benjamin's technique, except that he actually doesn't use the, uh, the vertical lines for the eyes. He just simply draws the eyes. 
So now we can start doing the jaw. And we can work with the, I don't know if it's on the, oh no, he didn't do it on the other page. That's the only thing bad about the book here that doesn't show you the, um, the side of the face or the contour of the face. So you, you're just going to have to figure it out yourself. So, so that's what we're going to do. And the top of the head, see? See how little by little it starts actually start forming the shape of the face and, and the hair and all the rest of the details of the neck. Right there. So at the eyes. Kind of like refine the eyes. And then add more details, more cheekbones right here. So that's more like, uh, I would say more like comic book style. I'm so used to using the Loomis method. Um, as you can see, this book is pretty good because it'll show you pretty much about expressions, stuff that you need to learn. Also, when you do expressions, you can do it this way too. Um, let me give you a perfect example of doing expressions do the block shape again that's if you're when you're doing a front view you're doing a front view eye nose mouth chin and this will be the hairline so let's say maybe this is a rocker or something going to indicate uh, the face you know just a simple shape that's it then you could practice by doing all these expressions like you see the how the eyebrows move say like we'll do this expression right here he's like scared so we indicate you know the planes you know and this is good for like practicing when you're doing expressions You know, practice by doing stuff like this, just by using the box shape. And don't do the eyes yet, you know, just do, you know, a hint of the eyebrows, the nose, and then the mouth, like he's really worried. Like that, see? Now, what you could do is, you could uh, start working with uh, the eyes. Like he's really scared. <laughs> there you go. So that's a good way of doing expressions by using the uh, box shape that actually helps you out. So. All right, so let's go on with another. Okay, just to show you how this book looks like. That way you guys might be interested. Maybe you might find it on eBay. So he did another second book, which the second book is pretty good. But this, this one shows you more about the face and heads. This also, if you guys are interested, perspective has some stuff about perspective here. So it's a, like a miniature book, you know. It's called uh, How to Draw a Graphic Novel Style by Andy Fish. So you might want to look out for this, okay? You probably could find it on um, Barnes & Nobles. Um, I don't know if they still have it on a low price again, but you could probably find it used on eBay. All right, so we're going to work with this book here, which... Um, I did show you this book before, but we're going to actually work with the methods and techniques. We're going to study it. I wouldn't say page by page, but, you know, the ones that I think that might be good. So let's start with this one. And uh, this one is doing a three-quarter view, but this one is pretty interesting because... What I like about this one is that it actually starts you off. Let me put this out of the way. Let's 
throwing me off here. All right, so you can see it starts off with a, an oval. I already read it, so it starts off with an oval, and then the most important thing is like, to figure out where the features are, especially when it's looking up. This would be the nose. Then after that, you add in the rest of the features, you see? Of course, this is a three-quarter view, so you gotta bring this eye a little bit closer, this eye further out, because it's a three-quarter view, and then you do. So let's, let's give this one a challenge. Vertical line. And the nose line is right here. See, so it's looking upward. Then we'll do a hint of the nostrils. Too. Then we'll do the rest of the features like you see here. We'll start doing the rest of the features. Let me fix this up a little bit as so you guys can see it. We'll do the eye here closer than the other eye further out. So you could, use, you could do actually these lines like that. But make sure that this, this line is closer to the vertical line because we're talking for shortening perspective, okay? Then we have the eyebrow line here. Then we'll make the mouth line here. And as you're doing this, you're actually shaping the face a little better. You're giving it shape. Then right here, as you can see here, there's another line here, but that's the chin line. But notice that in this looking up, you're going to see some space underneath where the jaw line is. So you got to capture that. And then you start going down. And then the neck. Okay. It's not perfect, perfect, because I'm so used to using the Loomis method. But this would actually work out if you actually practice it. So now that we have this, even though this is not perfect, we can start doing the outline of the hair, like you see over here. And part of the jaw, right on this side. It's underneath right there, see. So it's looking a little bit kind of like this, but not that much. So what do we do in order to get a face like that? So in order to get a face like that, I would actually start uh, shading shade it's like you were like shading the sockets you're sh the scribbling and the shading actually helps out form the the um, the shape of the eyes shade over here shade here and this one is actually taught by uh romero romero actually teaches us that shading is a good process in forming the whole face see how the face actually is turning a little bit you know, it's actually taking form and it's a little bit like it. So now what I could do is I could work with her eyebrows. I'm gonna make her eyebrows a little bit higher. So it's, and this eyebrow a little bit down because remember when you look at a face, it's not, you know, the symmetry is a little bit different. So this side of the face is not gonna look exactly like this side of the face. So you gotta keep in mind that this eye this eyebrow is going to be a little bit lower, so we want to make sure that we have that correct. So now I have a hint of the nose. Do the corner of her nose. The bottom of her nose. Now I'm not very good doing like the noses looking upward. But I definitely need a lot of practice with this. I got to remember that it has shape underneath the nose. So I'm going to leave that for last, but I want to work with the mouth. So I'm going to look at the mouth. The mouth goes up further up in this one, a little fuller down. So it's, diff it's a different shape. So what I'm going to do is, uh, like always, I do the triangle or the oval method, whatever, you know, kind of visualize it. And then work my way from the corner of the lip all the way up to the top of her lip. And this part over here will go up. And uh, this part. 
downward. So it's looking a little bit like her. Not that much, but it's almost there. So you can tell by this eye over here, even though this is not perfect, because I still think that, I think he went off a little bit over here, but it doesn't matter, we can fix it. We can fix it. So yeah, it looks a little better now. And then I gotta remember the cheek lines, the forehead, the temple part of her head. And then we'll make her hair. So her hairline is over here. So we gotta make more mass, more form to do the hair. So make sure that the hair, let's do this in black now because you can see it better in black okay now okay Now, in order to get her eyes right, so what I'm going to do is, um, I kind of like visual, like a ball shape, okay? It's like a ball shape, and pretty much that's what he shows here. He shows pretty much that the eye is like a ball shape, you see? Like a ball shape, so I want to get that look. Her ball shape and just render in her eyes. And this eye over here. I think I exaggerated too much those eyelids, but it's already too late. I did it in black pencil, so it's going to be hard to erase. But you know, the, the main thing is just that you guys figure this out. You know, you have the idea of it, and all you gotta do, do the same thing I did, and you could probably do it better than I can. The shade on the lips over here. I think I exaggerated a little bit the lips, because this pose is kinda hard to uh, do sometimes. I think I did the lips too big, I don't know yet, but anyway, it's it's just a regular sketch. It might not look exactly like the drawing, but as now we from the corner of the nose we make a line remember when we're looking at the face we're looking at this okay especially when her head is tilted back you can see that the segments are changing you see it's changing the segments okay so now the ears will be around over here so and then half her hair is going to come out on this on this side right here so just want to definitely make sure that we have her hair done right. So, so her hair is coming out this way. Sort of like layers, you know, just... Remember, hair is not easy to do, so really, really, you gotta like... Oh my God, so many planes passing by here. If it's not the dogs, it's the... It's the planes. So we have an idea of what we're doing here. 
timeline. I kind of like working with black pencil. The only problem with this is that you can't erase it. You know what I mean? So what I do is I just render it in pencil first and then, you know, go over it in black pencils. That way you guys can see more the details. Let's shade in a little bit more. Her neck is a little longer. I think I exaggerated that neck. I made it too too thick maybe just bring it in just like that a little bit like that okay that's not bad so that's pretty much how you do this technique right here and it tells you pretty much what you can do all right so now what we're gonna do is let me see we're going to do the ears so the ears draw a rough lay in of the ear just a rough so we're actually going to use our imagination trying to do this ear here so so i would start off in that position right there i would start off with just a center line and i'll do a shape of an oval kind of like a slight shape of an oval there and then i start working with um some details of the ear. And then you start making forms. Everything has to do with form, people. Form and shapes. In order to draw anything. Form and shapes. So then you start adding more and then after that what you do is you render in more details and then you start darkening it do a lot of cast shadows and all that stuff so i'm going to do a little bit of what i see here it's not going to be perfect perfect but the idea is to understand how it's done so it doesn't have to be perfect perfect there's no such thing as perfect. All right, so we have more ears over here, different shapes and different poses of ears. So let's go on the next page. Let's do the eye. And I already shown you pretty much how you do eyes, but we're gonna try with a circle, circle technique. I usually will start with a center line and start working with an circle and it says it right here lay in the size of location and folds of the eye build the volume by adding tone for the form and cast shadows stump pull out the highlights and, the, and give clarity to the edges when drawing the eye always begin with drawing a sphere circle and wrapping the lids over it there are two forms in an inner corner. Okay, I'm not going to read all this. I'm going to give you an idea how this is done. Because I forgot that my battery is going to go down a little bit. So, Plus, I want to watch some good movies today. So I'm going to dedicate some time for you guys. And then dedicate some time for me too. Because I need to rest and watch some good movies. Now we have the eyelid there. So you start off the circle and then you wrap the eyelid and start adding more shapes. This will be the bottom part of the eye. And if you want to make the eye like this eye looking either upward or corner or something, even though you have the center of the eye here, so you're going to make a curve. Like that, see? And that's it. Then you visualize the size of the iris by little tiny vertical lines. And there you go. You have the eye. Right there, see? And some pupils are a little bigger. But on the drawing, this pupil is a little bit smaller. So that's my mistake. I did a little bit bigger, but it doesn't matter. Now, after that, you could add 
the eyelashes, make it thicker a little bit on top. Some tiny eyelashes. You can tell that's more like a man's eye, so. And then of course, remember that when you're doing the, um, the eyebrows, okay? Always remember that when you're doing the eyebrows, the bottom part of the eyebrow is going to be darker because of the cast shadow. This here, this mass here that you see, the volume of the eyebrow, I don't know if that's a good way of actually explaining this, but this whole segment here is going to actually help you um, do the cast shadow of the eyes, okay? So always remember, especially underneath where the eyelid is, and you could actually... I bought this. This is pretty cool. This is like an eraser. It's like a pen eraser. I got to get more of this. This is really phenomenal. This is really cool. See, I really, really recommend it. It's really cool. It's like an eraser. So you erase those lines that you don't need. And so what, what's good about this, you can actually erase all these little details that are that even needed eraser can even do it. So we're going to actually dark this a little bit, give it more details, more form. Okay. Remember that when you're doing the eye, it's three shapes. This is the shape of the eye, right? Center of the eye. And it's three shapes. One shape here, shape on the top, and another shape this way. So then you have the other shape this way right there. Okay. Alrighty. Now let's study this. Oh my God, these planes. Looks like a lot of people are just leaving the country or something. All right. You can tell that this is an oval shape, but in order to get this effect, this pose, you notice that the, there's like a big U shape. So in order to do that, um, this is different over here. The face is looking upward. So I explained this before, but I'm going to explain it again, just in case. When you are drawing a face looking upward, okay, here we have a vertical line. You make sure that the, the alignment of the face, the eyes, are going up. All right? The nose is pointing up. And the mouth is a little bit closer. So you have the eye going up this way. The nose. And then the mouth right there. This part of the chin, you're going to make a U shape. Or you could actually use a triangle but form it into a U-shape, all right? And then, after that, you can do a hint of the eye there. You know, you scribble like that, you scribble right there, and then make the form of the shape of the face. A little bit lower. And here, you're going to see it's like perspective, like foreshortening. Uh, the head, you're going to see less, you see? Because you're going to see more of the bottom of the face. Okay, so that's an idea how to do this face. Now let's work with this face this pencil because I like working with several pencils. Notice I'm always changing a pencil after another pencil. And the point is, is to be comfortable when you're doing any type of sketch or any type of pose. So this is the eye line here. So you're going to make the eyes, work with the eyes first. 
and then you go down visualize the nose is pointing down okay and of course the mouth is a little bit closer to where the nose is see everything has to do with visual effect and like I said it's always good to use reference now you can start shaping the face but in order to shape the face make sure that everything is leveled you want to make sure you got the cheekbones do this in black pencil now And then the hairline, of course, is going to be a little up. You can actually do these lines in order to figure out the perspective after you do the first process. So the hairline is right here. And the forehead goes upward like this, you see? And now you have the shape of the head perspective and looking down see you can do a lot of things with this let me get some drink i'm losing my voice <coughs> it's um this cough and this sore throat i have all right so this what i just did right now is just this this one right now so all right now let's work with the nose Notice that the nose, and I've shown you pretty much how you do a nose, but how to do a nose in foreshortening and this. And you can tell this is the correct proportion. This is the wrong proportion because the eye is going too close to the center where the nose is. And then this is wrong. The nose is too big. Now, in order to get something like this, I would actually, you know, use lines. This is the vertical line for where the nose is going to be. I would do a hint of an eye here and a hint of an eye here. Then a hint of the nose. I would start off <clears throat> with the nose first. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with the nose first. I could use a pyramid shape. Or the triangle but I make sure that I have the rec the the nose first and the correct proportions now that I did the nose now I could go up from the corner of the nose go up and then do the plane remember the plane of the nose is important which is in between the nose and the eye so as you can see <clears throat> the correct one <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the correct one is this one right here. So I'm going to start doing the eye on this side. I could actually do a circle. And this eye is a bit closer because it's a three quarter view and it's foreshortened. So now I can work with the eye. Ooh, something's wrong. I gotta stop eating on my board. All right. I can start correcting the eye now. Shape it. On this side right here. <laughs> and the eyelid. Now, after I finish doing, you know, the details of the eyes and all that, and then shade in, as you can see over here, the cast shadow of where the nose is, it's always important to capture that. So we're going to actually shade that in and then shade a little bit underneath the eye. And then we can start working now that we have this, we can start working with the eyebrows. And this eyebrow is a little bit less because it's a three quarter view. See how it's getting a little more proportion, even though I got to work with this eye a little bit more. Okay. Now I can start working with the uh, contour of the face. 
Okay. You could also do it like I showed you before. Um, like Romero actually explained, I think it was in this book. I don't know where it is now. Hold on. Give me a minute. I'm going to show you right now that uh, you have so many options. So you can start doing the nose like that. You can do this technique right here, except that you're starting off the nose first and then you do the planes like you see over here, see? So you could do it that way. segments for the uh, eyebrow line, do the cross, you know, the nose, the mouth, the chin, and then work with the nose first, the shape, it's sort of like a triangle shape, and then what's next, you're going to do this side first, first you want to slice, you want to slice first, to make it, to give it that, you know, perspective and foreshortening because it's a three quarter view. And I don't care what anybody says. To me, a three quarter view has three things in common, perspective and foreshortening. That's the way, and I'm pretty sure if Loomis was alive today, he would probably actually give me a check on that one. And then you could do this side of the planes here. And then right here, the planes of the forehead, see? So this is a very good way of doing the nose. If you want to get the right proportions of the nose. And you could, you know, shade in the sockets to give it that effect. Shade in right here. the planes from the corner of the nose, you know, the triangle technique. Like that. You're doing it sort of like a triangle, triangle here, but make sure it's less here and spread out more on this side because we're talking here about a three quarter view, people, three quarter view. And remember the, um, the segment for the cheekbones, okay? We're talking here a three quarter view. Now we could do the mouth. There and the lip right there and then the chin. So I don't know if I got the proportions correctly done, but it's always a good chance to go back and fix it. There you go. There you go, see? There you go, it's more better now. Okay, so you could do it like both ways, the way I did it before, or you could do it the second way. All right, so let's go on with the book. And I'm gonna keep this in my construction book in case we ha need to use it again. So we have an idea how to make the nose and the eye connected all together. So now we're gonna work with the um, this technique here. You can see that he started off like a very blocky shape I'm going to bring it a little bit closer so you can see it. Sort of like a blocky shape. And then he added like ovals, shapes, ovals for the nose until he got the proportions. So let's try that out. Let's use another piece of paper. And we'll start working the same thing. We'll start doing the block triangle shape for the nose. That's what we're going to do. This will be the bridge of the nose right here. So we're doing another way of doing this better. Let's do it. Let's do it more simpler to understand. 
when you're practicing on noses, you can do a triangle, okay, like this. But remember, when you're doing a three-quarter view nose, you make another slice right there. So like you're actually dividing the nose. And then you're actually making it smaller on this side because it's a three-quarter view. So you could do it that way if you want. Let's erase this. And now, let's do pretty much what he actually demonstrates in the book. Um, oval shapes. And an oval shape for the corner of the nose. Okay. So he did it a little bit different, but I'm doing it a little bit more practical, more easier to understand. And after that, you just, you know, visualize, you do the contour, the outline of the nose. And you have the nose just by doing that. Notice that if you look at this nose right here, it has a lot of uh, contour lines, and especially underneath the nose right here. There's also contour lines, except that he's actually saying that don't, do not uh, actually exaggerate too much the corner of the nose here. Um, you got to make it nice and shapely uh, when you're doing noses. Right here, make simple forms before adding character. Yeah, of course, everything has to do with form and shapes. And that's when you add more character. So let's do this type of nose looking upward. Which I definitely need a lot of practice with that one. So we're going to do the nose looking upward. And this will be the other side of the nose. Right there. Right there. So. Pretty much it looks like it. Now we could actually um, shade this part right here. Okay. And underneath right there. Now we could add more like contour for the nose. Give it shape. What I should have done, I should have done this in pencil better, but anyway, it's too late now. This will be the nostrils. And then more shape over here. You see? That's what this is right here. All right, so now let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what's next. Looking down on the nose. We already did that already. So. Let's do the lips. All right. And I've shown you guys how to do lips before. But anyway, this is a different technique, I guess. Or maybe it might be the same like I've done. So let's see what happens. Let's work with this pencil first. It says here, lay in the size of the location and angle the mouth. Build the volume and add the tone for the core of the cat shadow. All right, so I usually, when I do lips, I usually start with a vertical line because that's the center of the mouth, of course. But we're going to do it a little bit like he did it because he actually did it horizontally, you know what I mean? But I'm going to do it my way, a little bit of my way, a little bit of his way. Let's see what happens. And then we'll do the outline of the lip very lightly. The bottom of the lip over here. Very likely. So it says on the next one, build the volume. Build the volume, meaning that you're shaping it and add the tone for the core, the cast shadow. So we build in the volume. We make the ship, sorry, the, the, um, the shape. And of course, always start with the center. Start the center. So in other words, he's, he's actually doing something like this. No vertical line, just, and then you're just actually shaping the, the lips. 
afterwards. And that's pretty much what I've been showing you guys. Except this is just a little tiny different. Then over here he explains that just like the hair and the face, everything has to do with planes. There's planes here, planes over here on the lips, on the top right here. So we got to focus with that. We can start, you know, visualizing these shapes. You don't really have to draw it. You just visualize it. You know, once you learn all this stuff, trust me, you can visualize all this. You can actually visualize ovals also at the same time. You're seeing it little by little in your mind. That's what you have a mind for. Your mind could be very powerful, believe it or not. Until the day it comes that it's over. No more thinking. And that's about it. So that's a very good way of doing a lip. And you could do the lip so many ways. You could do a three-quarter view. You could actually do a side view. This is a very good demonstration here that most people have trouble doing this with the lips. The nose is further to, uh, further back. And the lips are too frontward. Over here is the correct one. This one is wrong and this one is wrong. So this one is correct. So let's do the correct one. We'll start from this side over here. We'll do the triangle. Let me see something for a second. Get something to drink. Now we can start, okay. Make a center line right there. And right here will be the lip. Now in order for me to do something like that, like pretty much like I've been showing you guys, you could use the uh, triangle. That gives it a better understanding. It's like if you were seeing a triangle like this, watch. This will be half of the nose, this will be the nose, and this will be the mouth, you see, like that. Practice by doing this. This actually will help you improve a better way how to do a three-quarter view lip. So all you have to do is shape it. Nose, the mouth. bottom of the lip and this over here will actually help you form the planes of the nose where is the corner of the nose of course right there little by little you'll start seeing the shape of the lip take form okay that's how you do a three-quarter view lip all right, so right here, it's uh, giving you an idea how to do toning, like the highlights of a lip. You can see a lot of cast shadow over here and less cast shadow over here on this side. And on top of the lip, and it depends. When you're drawing the nose, the top of the, the lip is a little bit, there's more dark areas, especially where the lip area is. Here we have expressions of the lip and the mouth. Notice that when you're doing expressions, which I'm going to give you an idea how to do expressions, especially mouths like that. So we have, 
don't know if you guys can see right here. Here's the, here's the nose right here. Start off with the nose first, then the corners of the nose. All right, now in order for me to do something like this, I got to actually concentrate. I will start off with the corners of the nose, which you see this, these planes over here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it in pencil first. I'm going to do sort of like a, a ghost image of a mouth opening. And then I'm going to do the shape of those I don't know what they're called they're called I think they're called creases or something or I was I would just say more like planes so in order to get that effect I shape the mouth after I did that little oval I start shaping the mouth See, little by little, it starts taking shape of the mouth. So you have an idea pretty much what I've done here. Now let's go, uh, hair, I'm not gonna, well, the hair, this is a simple way how to do a hair also by starting by toning and then adding lines and then making it more darker. It's like, see, A, B, C, D, how to make the hair. But th this takes a lot of uh, concentration and it takes a lot of time and a lot of devotion because you can tell there was a lot of devotion on this and a lot of, you know, concentrating. So the same process is the same process over here, see? So you can start off by shading adding details and then making it more darker and that's I think that's how this was done so let's uh, draw some more stuff here right. now let's do the face uh, front view which is over here someplace that's this one This is a pretty simple technique, but I'm gonna show you both ways how you can do this. All right, so you can start with a vertical line across, same thing, vertical line cross. Line for the eyes, a line for the nose and the chin. Okay, so you indicate where the eyes are going to be at. Remember, this is going to be a sort of like a three-quarter view. Indicate where the nose is. Actually, I'm doing this wrong. Hold on a second. Give me a chance here, guys. Hold on. Let me get some more paper. Let's do this correctly, and we'll get this right. Let's see. Let's 
This time I'll do it in pencil. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so the three quarter view. We can do a, like a seven upside down seven for the nose and the mouth and the chin. Now I'm gonna show you my way and I'm gonna show you the way the book shows you. But this is the way I would probably do something like this. Now I can start adding shape. Hairline. It's like I'm adding more shape to this whole first segment that I did until I see it come to shape. See? See that? Then these lines here, like, you know, the hairline, I'll start seeing you know, the shape of the face more. Uh, right here, the hairline. Then the jaw. And then the ears on this side. See how simple it is? Just by starting by across the eye segments, the nose, the mouth, the chin, and then little by little by little, you start shaping the whole form of the face. Now I can start working with the details. Or let me see, I think the next page has more. Yeah. So this kind of reminds me of the George Bridgman, kind of a little bit, George Bridgman. So what I'm gonna do is another line on top that would be my eyebrow line. And then at the same time, I have the planes right there. And then do these ovals. Oh my Lord, those planes. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but let me know. All right, the ovals. Yeah, every time when those planes pass by, it says I gotta actually force myself to speak a little bit louder. There you go. My stomach is growling. That means I have to eat something. Believe it or not, I haven't eaten anything. I just, <laughs> I came from work and I just crashed. I just took my medication and just crashed. Had a couple of nightmares. Then after that, I woke up. And that's it. I'm here. So it's beginning to look a little bit like that. I think mine is a little bit better because it's more like a three quarter view. Cause that's what I intended to do, a three quarter view. And we do, we do sort of like eye shapes, which is the bowl shapes for the eye shapes. Bowl shapes for the eye shapes. You can tell he did a lot of cast shadow there, cast shadow there. And then the neck, of course. This is a three-quarter view, so I gotta make it look like a three-quarter view. There you go. So that looks pretty good. Not bad. Not bad at all. And we start shaping the face. This would be part of the hair. Again, you could use the, um, the oval first and then do the line segments, you know, the grid lines and the construction lines. 
Or you can do it my way, that I started off with the cross and then I started building up the face all around. It's up to you guys. I mean, you know, you can do it that way or you could do it the way the book sh actually tells you, just in case you guys get the book. Just in case. I don't know what you guys are looking for. So far, I've been getting a lot of thumbs down, but it is what it is. Okay, so you could actually do it that way. So let's go with another one. That's the finished process of the drawing. Let's start this one. And this one is the front view. Of course, this is going to be a different uh, way of forming this. So what I do is I start off... I'm going to actually analyze this first. I'm going to look at the, uh, the segments. Pretty much is done by an oval, then the center line, the way he explains over here. Mark the mid, just like always, the midpoint of the oval, which is, of course, the eyes. It's not the nose, because that's the eye line. All right, so let's do it the way he did it. But I might change it because I don't know. I have a habit of changing techniques and methods. So let's see what happens. I might change it. It depends how I feel about it, you know? It's like you say to yourself, oh, I don't know. This doesn't look right. So, And I always get that feeling sometimes, but I always correct it. The midpoint would be here, which is the eye line, of course. And, of course, the nose line and the mouth line and the chin line. Now, notice that before he started slicing off the shape of the face, which is actually the contour of the face, and he used the uh, sort of like a triangle technique or a pyramid shape from the corner of the eyes, okay? So we're going to do all that, trust me. But notice that the beginning process, he does sort of like a gesture of the eyes, a gesture of the hair. And then after that, he starts doing shaping everything in place. So let's do it the way it actually shows you in the book. So I'm going to do the segments for the eyes. Always start from the center where the vertical line is. It's better that way. That way you can actually see the other shape. You can actually see where the other part of the eye is going to be, where it's going to end. So start here and then start here. Okay, so now we got that. We're gonna do a hint of her hair here. It's like he started mapping out, blocking in, you know, gesturing it. And now what I'm gonna do is the V shape. The V shape straight down to where the chin is okay and now my greatest guess is that he slices off the face but i'm not going to go like he did he exaggerated here my greatest guess doing this technique is you just do a hint of the the slice part of the face so that's what I'm gonna do the a hint like that and then after that I'm gonna start working with the shape of the face which I'm gonna taper in I'm gonna visualize everything will start taking form 
and if I want to make it more simpler to understand I can do details of the nose the mouth it actually helps me better understand where things might go where it's gonna actually take me to and then I can start slicing it's better Bye, George. I think you've got it, old chap. Yep, I got it. See? So it was better for me to start with uh, some hint of the features. You know, even though I did the uh, triangle shape. But I think it's better to start doing the features first, do the triangle, then start slicing off the face. All right, so now we have an idea of what we're doing. Nostrils. Lips. So we have an, an idea what we're doing. Okay, and then the neck is smaller. Now, notice that he actually used circles for the, the eyeball shapes. But after that, he started doing more planes and added ovals for the cheekbones and the same technique I usually use. That's sort of like an oval around the mouth. And I know I showed you this before, but I want to actually practice, practice uh, this a little bit more, you know because I need a lot of practice with different techniques and methods. So we're going to actually use oval shapes, you know, round oval shapes for the eyes, oval shapes for the cheekbones, but very lightly. I'm not going to do it hard or, you know, just... And an oval shape around the mouth. That's it. Then... Let me see, let me go back to the oval page here. You can see that he starts a bridge of the nose. I drew on that by mistake. After that, an oval for the chin. So that's what he does, an oval for the chin. There's a dog, big, the big dog barking again, like always. Okay, so now, bridge of the nose. He's saying, how dare you leave me alone? I forgot it's a female. It's a female dog. There you guys. Now we can start working with... Uh, I had the sharpener in here someplace, so I gotta look for it. Let me see. I don't know the sharpener in here. Alright, so. Oh, here it is. So I thought I lost it already. Nice and sharp. This time I'll put it in the, the dish. That way I won't lose it. All right, so now we could start working with her face.
pretty sure it's level. This one is a little bit higher. are just a little bit too high so let's fix that These ovals I did here actually would help me form the cheekbones better. But it doesn't matter because sometimes when you use the diamond shape or the planes for the face, it actually will help you see the form of the cheekbones. And right around here, that's where the jaw tapers in actually use another line like this to to figure out but you got to be careful when you're doing the bottom of the jaw it's not easy it's just you really gotta visualize where everything starts taking place visual effect people it's all about visual effect Oh, let's see, she has bangs on her hair or something. Ears. Okay, after this, guys, I think this is enough. I think I did two good videos for you guys. I'm not really sure if it's good or not. Let's see. It depends on the likes and the thumbs down. But like I said before, I'd like to thank everybody that gave me thumbs down. That actually gives me more uh, encouragement to do better videos. And believe it or not, that's how I learned way, way back when I used to visit Marvel and DC. They um, actually criticized my artwork, gave me a lot of critics, put my artwork down and... Uh, even though it did give me sort of like a, uh, I would say a burnout, but after that, I just never gave up. I just kept on drawing and drawing and until I started getting a little better years passing. So now what I gotta do is erase all these lines that I don't need. That's it. It's not a perfect, perfect drawing, but it's almost there. I think that maybe the cheekbones are a little bit exaggerated, which I could make a little bit better. I know one artist, uh, his name is uh, Frank Frazetto, I think. No, no, not Frank Frazetto. Uh, Frank Granado, yes, Frank Granado. That he almost draws a little bit like Frank Frazetto. And when he draws his faces, I notice he does a lot of shading from the corners like that and all the way down. That's what he does. And he draws some pretty cool looking women which I might do a video because I'm, I ordered another book by him and we're gonna focus on his methods, on his techniques. Frank Granado. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him, but anyway, it's, it's coming soon, that book. 
I already have one book by him, which is How to Draw Fantasy Women, which is basically mostly the faces. He's got another book also, How to Draw Fantasy Women, The Bodies, The Anatomy, I think. And then he's got... The one I ordered recently is um, How to Draw Warriors by Frank Renato. So that should be coming soon. I gotta erase these unwanted lines. Lines that I don't need. Where is that? My pen eraser. Oh, here it is. So I erase all these little line details that I do not need. I love this. This is actually cool. Actually, it makes my drawings improve more better, I guess. Hmm. Guys, I'm going to have to leave you guys. I wish I had more time for you guys, but I got to eat. And because I haven't eaten anything, believe it or not. I woke up. And I didn't eat anything. Plus, I was waiting for my friend to bring me these great movies, which I'm going to see right now. sad part is that I'll be watching these movies by myself. Uh, but anyway, it's better than nothing. Get to rest, watch the movies. Some good, good movies. Movies to die for. I remember there was a like a, these horror movies they used to give a lot. I think it was on um, in the theaters, and they were actually their slogan was "movies to be afraid and die for." Hmm. There you go. So it looks pretty cool. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll continue. And uh, good luck with your artwork.